So can you just sort of take us through how, nor how normal muscle works and how the normal interaction between neurons and the brain and muscle is and then what goes on in ALS that changes? Oh yes, of course. Well, normally when you want to make a movement, it starts in the brain. There's an area of the brain called the motor cortex, which initiates a, an impulse traveling down through the brain, the brain stem, down the spinal cord where it connects to another nerve which travels out to the muscle and with that connection you can make a movement. So you make a decision, voluntary or not, I'm gonna move my hand, it moves. It, yes, exactly. And those two systems, the upper one that goes from the brain to the spinal cord is called the upper motor neuron and the one that leaves the spinal cord and goes to the muscle is the lower motor neuron. And then in ALS, this doesn't work right? Uh, yes, that's right. Typically, both of those systems start to break down. It could begin with the upper or with the lower or sometimes with a mixture of each. But eventually, in the true full-blown ALS, both systems are deteriorating. The name of the disease itself, the ALS, um, it, it, it's sort of interesting because the, the muscles, there's nothing particularly wrong with the muscle. Yes, that's right. It's not the muscle itself that's the problem. But yet the muscle deteriorates. Yes, it does, because it loses its lower motor neuron connection. And once that connection is lost, the muscle shrinks and shrivels. Why? We don't really know, but it's probably because the nerve connection itself is feeding the muscle something which tells it that it still has a connection. When that connection is lost, that trophic factor, which is probably what it is, is no longer present for that muscle, and so it shrivels up and, uh, and dies.